Okay. This talk is going to be about something called an initial value problem. Hopefully, if you've seen the introductory video to differential equations, you have some idea what an initial value problem is. We'll go over the definition. So it's basically you have a differential equation and you additionally have a piece of information which is essentially it's a point in the door. So, so we're trying to find a function which satisfies this differential equation. The information we have is basically you specify the point, the function value at the point, and the values of the first k minus one derivatives where the differential equation has order k. Okay. And the so solution to the initial value problem is a solution, functional solution, or if you I mean you may get a relational solution instead, but basically it's a solution to the differential equation which additionally satisfies the condition that that the value is correct and the derivative is correct and like all the derivatives match the specification. So these are actually x0, y0 and all are actually numbers. Okay, these are all numbers. Okay, now how do you solve an initial value problem in general? Well, one way of doing it is you first find the general solution and in general, we expect that the general solution to an order k differential equation should have k free parameters. Okay, there'll be k constants, unknown constants, and like you can specify various values of those constants to get uh, to get uh, solutions to the differential equation. Okay, and now you want to find those values of those constants for which you actually get a solution which satisfies this initial value condition. So the initial value condition will give k equations in these k parameters. What are the k equations you'll get? Well, you'll get all these equations. There's k of them, right? Mm -hmm. 0, 1, 2 till k minus 1. So there's k of them. And now little f, we almost know little f except we don't know the values of parameters. So, so basically each of these, when you plug in those expressions, you'll get uh, equations involving the parameters. Okay, so you'll get k equations in the k parameters you solve. If, if, if life is really good, you'll get a unique solution. Otherwise, you hope to get a discrete solution that may, maybe means finitely many solutions or maybe not quite finitely many, but something close to that. Okay, uh, let's see some examples. So let's, let's start by looking at, uh, so I hope by now you've seen how to solve a separable differential equation. Okay. And uh, we'll do an example involving uh, separable differential equations. Okay. So you take uh, Okay, and uh, let's say that you, okay, let's just help first solve this and see what we get, the general solution. What's the general solution going to be like? Hmm? You mean solve the solve, same yeah. equation? Yeah, solve this equation, yeah. First, there's stationary solutions. What's the stationary solution? Hmm? Uh, one. Y is what? X is. No, like what are the constant function solutions to this? Hmm? Y is. Well, it's it's a, it's the roots of this thing, right? So what are they? One. Negative one, right? So if y is a constant function negative one, then this equation is satisfied, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Is that okay? You remember the concept of stationary solutions, right? Okay, let's now try, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's now try to find the non-stationary solution. Okay, so you'll get ln mod y plus one is what? Arctangent. 
<laughs> one third. Yeah, x cubed plus x. X cubed over three. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So. Uh, times exponential of this thing. I write x of something when I want to write e to the power of that, but it's too big to put in an exponent. Okay, uh, now I put k as the sign of, this is actually pretty similar to an example we did uh, with the separable uh, differential, in the separable differential equations video, it's just a change a little bit. Okay, so, uh, And so basically you sort of put the sign ambiguity in the sort of put it along with this. So you'll get y plus 1 is k exponential of x cubed over 3 plus x. Uh, and k is non-zero right now. So y is k exponential of x cubed over 3 plus x. This is x over 3. That's x minus 1, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but now actually uh, k is non zero for this, but you can uh, sort of add back the stationary solution by a line k equals 0, right? Right? Yeah. So you can just put k in R and you add it back stationary solution. Okay. So this is the general solution and it has one free parameter. What's the free parameter? C. K. Okay. Right. We started with C, but then we sort of also included the sign ambiguity and, uh, okay. Now, suppose I tell you that uh, when X is, suppose I give you the initial value condition that when uh, Let's see. When x is 1. Why not just use 0? Well, I, I, I decide what the initial value condition is. You don't. Okay. So, uh, when x is 1, then y is 2. Okay. What will you get? How do you actually get the function now? Hmm? Just plug in 1. Plug in x is 1. So what will you get? You get 2 is k. Yeah. What do you get here? 4 over 3. So e to the 4 thirds. Hmm? Minus 1. Right? Yeah. So what do you get the value of k as? What does k become? 3 times e to the negative 4 thirds. Okay. And now you can plug this value of k back in here. Right? So what's your uh, final sol solution to the initial value problem? y equals, well, k is 3 times e to the minus 4 thirds. The minus 4 thirds you can sort of put back in here. You'll get 3 times x of x of oh, this little space here. I'll just write it. Okay. This? So we get we get y is yeah what do you get? 3 times x of x cubed minus 4 over 3 plus x minus 1. Okay. Now, the, let's just check again. Does it satisfy the differential equation and does it satisfy the initial value condition? Uh, well, let's just check if it satisfies the initial value condition. So, does it? When you plug in x is 1, you get y is 2? Yeah. 
if you do that so we get 1 minus 4 is minus 3 over 3 is minus 1 plus 1 is 0 e to the 0 is 1 3 times 1 is 3 minus 1 is 2 okay good so it satisfies the initial value condition uh, what more do we need to check let's we, we also can check whether it satisfies the differential equation well let's just do that so what's dy dx well it's uh, just this this whole thing right uh, this part, which is just y plus, I mean, it's the you use a chain rule, right? Right, we use a chain rule. Uh, but 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 instead of writing the whole expression, I'll just write it this the the first part or the outer part of the chain rule. Yeah, the outer part of the chain rule just is y plus one, right? Because you just get this part, which is y plus one times the derivative of d dx of what? Uh, the three comes out. See the three is under so three already came there. The derivative of what? X cube minus four over three plus x. Right? Which is y plus one times what's the derivative of x cube over three minus four over three plus x? x squared plus 1. Okay. And so we are done, right? Satisfies the differential equation. Okay. So basically we got a solution using our method. It satisfies the differential equation and it satisfies the initial value condition. Now you don't actually have to check that it satisfies the differential equation and the initial value condition uh, because that's how you solve it. We just did it for like an extra uh, sort of clarity check. Okay. Suppose I give you another, the same differential equation but with a different initial value condition. Okay. So suppose I give you a uh, Let's say x is 5, y is minus 1. Okay, in that case, what's the solution? So the same differential equation, but now I have a different initial value condition. What's the solution in that case? A different one. Well, which one? What's the solution? You have to plug in. Well, you do. Uh, However, in this case, there you get, you notice you can actually get it pretty quickly. It's going to be the stationary solution. Right? Mm -hmm. If you have an initial value condition where at that initial value you already have the, the a stationary solution value, then, then definitely a stationary solution is a solution. And since we have a unique solution here, it's going to be the stationary solution. Right? You'll get minus one is something minus 1, the minus 1 minus 1 will cancel and that will force the k to be uh, 0. Okay? Okay, good. So the same differential equation, uh, different initial value conditions will give you different solutions. Now in this case, how many equations did we have and how many variables did we have when we were solving? We just had one. Oh, by the way, the k that I used was not this k. This k is 1. That The k that I used was actually the k for the constant. Hmm? Uh, so, so we had one equation in one variable, we get the initial value condition. This is the first order differential equation, we just specified one piece of information. Okay, we didn't specify the derivative. Now, if you have a second order differential equation, then the general solution will be two free parameters and you'll get, uh, when you plug in the initial value condition, which will include the value of the function and the value of the first derivative, you'll get two equations in those two free parameters and you'll have to solve and uh, get uh, find solutions and, and get that. Okay, so let me now mention a couple more things. So initial value problem typically refers to this type of setup. You have a single point, you're given the function value, first derivative and so on, till the k minus 1 derivative. There's some variations. One is where, or rather, the, there's one type of variation where instead of giving a single point, you give information at multiple points, but you don't specify all the derivatives at each point. Okay, so maybe you specify only a few of the derivatives. But you do that at more points so that in total you still have k pieces of information where k is the order of the differential equation. Okay? So in total you still want k pieces of information because you want as many equations as variables. There's the number of parameters so that you so you expect that if the equations are consistent and not redundant then you'll get essentially unique or discrete solution sets. 
One extreme case is where you just specify the value of the function and not of any of the derivatives. You just specify the value of the function at k distinct points. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's sort of an extreme and and w w whichever one thing you have, you basically the solution strategy is similar. You find the general solution, then you use the these conditions to get equations and you try to solve those for the parameters. Then you plug back the parameter values in the general solution expression and uh, then you get the solution initial value problem or the variation. Yeah. 